Hello and welcome to our very special episode again. I again have uh, Brother Victor with me. He will expound on the importance of faith in a believer's life. Welcome, Brother Victor. Hey, thank you, Joe. Thanks a lot. It's so good. Wonderful day. Well, every day with Jesus is good. Well, better say, you know what? Any bad day with Jesus is far better than any good day without him. Well, let's look at, uh, talk about faith in Lord. A couple of different situations we'll talk about. Let's start with one in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. It's about Jesus saying, if you have a faith like a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Now, you see, I've read this so many times. This kind of slips away. Yeah, well, faith in Jesus, faith in Jesus and all this. But then if you look at it, it says, if you have faith in me, like a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And I go, what? Shouldn't he say, if you show me little faith, even like a mustard seed, I will move mountains for you. That would be appropriate, right? Because Jesus, he can do miracles. He does, he's a miracle maker. But no, what he says, if you have a faith like a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Tiny little mustard seed, like a grain of sand, can move mountains. Well, didn't Jesus also say, even camel can go through an eye of a needle? Well, let's look at who by faith did indeed move a mountain. In Mark, Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 25 to 34. There's a little story about a woman who had a blood flow for 12 years. She had a problem, continuous blood flowing in the body for 12 years. It says she spent all her money to the doctors. But they couldn't heal her. In fact, they made her worse. Well, isn't that the world today? You see, in this material world, no matter how much wealth you accumulate in all your time, all your life, there comes a time and a situation where all your wealth creates wings and fly away, never to be found again, right? And you accomplish nothing. Now, that lady with a blood problem, generally in life, heard about and probably had seen multitude of people had been cured of their deadly diseases. Blind were given sight, lame walked, lepers were cleansed, dead came to life in an instant. Well, that supernatural and graceful mercy of the Lord Jesus healing others created in her little faith that surpassed all understanding. And the result of her faith was even Jesus was astonished as to what she did. Look at Mark 5, 28. She's in problems. She has a blood problems. She has lost everything. She says to herself, if I only touch his clothes, I shall be healed. Again, if I only touch his clothes, I shall be healed. You see, he didn't say, if I touch his clothes, I may be healed. But she, but she said, I shall be healed. If she had said, I may be healed, would I have been hopeful situation? Not a certain one. But when she said, I shall be healed, that because her faith in Jesus guaranteed her that she will be cured. Her faith gave her certainty that she will be healed. Another gem in this little story is, 
that the woman did not even think to go to Jesus and ask him to heal her. As she probably had heard from others, that people went and pleaded with Jesus for their healthy healings and mercies and all that. And Jesus did heal them. But her faith prompted her to pull the healing from Jesus without bothering him. She created a flow, we can say, a little tube to Jesus from which she pulled his blessings by her own decision. Okay, let's see what happens again. And that's what she really did. She touched his garment, got healed, and was on her way. All of a sudden, Jesus stopped and shouted, Who touched me? There was a silence everywhere. Well, his disciples said, come on, Lord, look, you're surrounded by so many people. They're all touching you, pushing you, falling on you. And you said, who touched you? What did Jesus say? Someone pulled power out of me. He meant someone pulled grace from me. And when he found her, he blessed her. You see, by her little faith, she did far better than moving a mountain. She got her healing from that bloody disease clinging to her for 12 years. That healing for her was far more important, far more joyful than moving a mountain, right? What a beautiful demonstration of faith, even astonished Jesus. People used to ask him, Lord, Jairus asked him, Lord, please come, my daughter is dying. Roman centurion came, Lord, please, I have a servant who is like my son, please come and heal him. And Jesus did. The blind man called, Jesus, son of David, I want to see. Jesus said, okay, here, see. Everybody asked and Jesus did it. Whereas woman did not ask him. But she got the same blessing. And Jesus said, who touched me? Isn't that a wonderful? Now let's look at similar situation in another nugget we can say. In Luke Chapter 23, 39 to 43, or four verses. There were two criminals who were crucified with Jesus, one on left, one on right. I see one thief blasphemes Jesus and taunts him. He says, hey, you, you think you're Christ? Anointed one or Messiah? Huh. Why don't you come down from the cross? Save yourself and also us. He didn't even finish yet a second rebukes him. How did he how, what, what did he say? Hey, listen, we both deserve this punishment that we are getting. For we are thieves. But this man has done nothing wrong. Did he say, well, I've heard that this man has done nothing wrong. No. He said with authority, this man has done nothing wrong. Now see what happens is when he was thief, both were thieves. He had probably heard and also seen many times events where Jesus did merciful and graceful miracles to people. Though he didn't pay much attention to Jesus at that time, since he was in his prime life, living happy life by criminal activities, yet somehow in a small corner of his heart 
had a knowledge and little respect for Jesus for what Jesus did to other people. And what did he proclaim to be? Who he was and all that. And he also had heard that Jesus had claimed to be from heaven and did supernatural wonders unheard and impossible in human powers. Like bringing dead people to life, man. Well, now that he is on the cross, he realized that Jesus was crucified without a cause. Now, what furthermore strengthened his faith in Jesus was the statement Jesus made few minutes earlier hanging on the cross. That's in verse 34. What did Jesus say? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Boy, his heart melted and he is strongly rebuked the other mocking thief. Now see the real pearl in this little story in verse 42. He turns to Jesus and he says to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There are two words which mostly, generally, we overlook. Very heavy words, two of them. One is Lord. He calls Jesus Lord. That is accepting him as God. Another word in that little sentence is when. He says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, see, he didn't say, Lord, remember me if you come into your kingdom. Same thing. If he would have said, if, would have been doubtful. Well, maybe if you are, then I'll be okay or whatever. But no, he showed his faith when you come into your kingdom. And into your kingdom? That means he did accept Jesus by telling him that your kingdom, that means there was a kingdom Jesus proclaimed all his life on earth, that he was from heaven, he was from God. So you see in this one little sentence, what did he say? Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Okay, what did he get? What did Jesus say? Today you will be with me in paradise. You see, folks, look at the faith. Just show faith in you, in the Lord, and you see what you get instantly. It's exactly, identically, today, the same situation. Jesus was in person in those days. Today, Jesus is also in Holy Spirit in us. Holy Spirit is talking to a lot of people who haven't accepted him yet. There is Holy Spirit with you, folks, if you are listening to this message. Accept him and he will come into you. And you will be assured in kingdom of heaven. Now let's look at something. Let's talk about some situation. What are you? What are you worth? Well, you are eternal soul trapped in a temporal body, flesh, right? There are two parts of you. One is your soul. One is your flesh. 
What is your body worth? What is your soul worth? You see, in this world, physical world, you have possessions, valuables, jewelry, property. Now you want to know what is your property worth? Well, what do you do? Where do you go? You go to the marketplace and whatever someone else is ready to pay for your property, that's what your property is worth, right? A market value. My question to you is, how do you know? What is your soul worth? Well, come to the cross of Calvary and see for yourself the price offered for your soul and see, is it worth it? Well, you say it enough, folks. It all boils down to faith in Jesus Christ. Only Lord, only God, living God, God of the living. Every other God is God of the dead. For they are dead. Only Jesus Christ is a living God, merciful God. You want to be living forever? Accept him. You want to be dead forever? Reject him. Choose. As Joshua said, choose for yourself. Who would you worship? Baal? Are the Lord God. As for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord God. Folks, uh, hopefully this uh, video was a great blessing. Thanks for joining us and thanks for listening to our uh, video once again. Thank you, Brother uh, Victor. God will use us as his instruments and he will reach. There are people He's looking for and there are people who are listening to me. Jesus is looking for you. He's right at your door. We will be back.